South Florida for game two with the Marlins. Miami pulled out the opener with a four-run night for their fifth straight win. Tonight, Steven Strasburg looks to get the Nats back even. Tonight, it is time for game two of the three game series. Game eight of the nine game road trip. Now, there's a rumor there was a ball game here last night. The guys have forgotten about it. We're going to look ahead as well. But it is worthy to note the Marlins have won five in a row and eight of their last nine. Bob and FP, we welcome you to South Florida. First order of business, Jason Worth, day to day with the ankle. He says he was pretty sore this morning. Pretty sore this morning, pretty upset that he tried to stretch that into a double with a six to nothing lead, but it could have used that run later in the game, and we'll keep an eye on the ankle. Ankles can be tricky, so hopefully he's back in there tomorrow. Yeah, he's not in the lineup tonight, Nate McClouth in right field. This season has been a puzzling one for all of us who watch Steven Strasburg. Losing record big time on the road, and FP against some ball clubs that, quite honestly, you would expect him to dominate. Yeah, and you're sitting there going, well, why is he better at home than on the road? I know he likes his routine, and he likes the mound at Nats Park, but when you look at the teams that he's lost to on the road this year, and the teams that he's faced on the road, the Phillies twice, they're 14 games under, Arizona, they're 14 games under, Colorado, 19 games under, the Marlins and the Mets, both under 500, he did face Pittsburgh, San Francisco, St. Louis, and Milwaukee on the road, so we're searching for reasons, and it might be just one of those things, Carp, because he's been good on the road in the past, this year, not so much. Well, tonight, he needs to turn things around. Get the Nats back on the winning side after a devastating loss last night. It's what aces do. Yeah, a tough game last night, but like you said, we're forgetting about last night. It didn't happen, and that's the great thing about baseball. Got another one tonight. And a leadoff man will be with you shortly. That's Denard Spann. He's hitting 367 over his last 23 games. Top 10 in the National League in multi hit games, doubles, and runs. He visits with our leadoff guy, Dan Colco, next. Set between the Nationals and the Marlins. Nats looking to even this series up going into tomorrow's game three. I'm here with Denard Spann, who's taking a couple minutes with us before the start of this game two. Denard, we've talked a lot about your offense. I want to start with a question about your defense, first of all. We, 
we know that you're quick in terms of getting to balls and the routes that you take are, are pretty precise and you pride yourself on that. How, when did that become a strength of yours and how did that kind of evolve for you over the course of your maybe youth baseball life and getting up into the pros? Uh, you know what, uh, I, I believe it began for me, um, you know, the, the, the first year I got drafted uh, in, in the Minnesota Twins organization. Um, you know, when I first got there, they were talking about, you know, talking about routes and, you know, taking a direct route and all this to the ball. And, um, you know, for so long in high school, I just, whenever the ball was hit, I just went and went and uh, you know, went, went to go catch the ball. And um, so, you know, I, I began um, working on that my first couple of years in pro ball. There have been some that have said that your defense maybe isn't what it used to be. How do you react to hearing that type of talk? And where do you feel like your defensive play is at this point in your career? Uh, you know what, people are going to say what they want to say. Um, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, you know, if you watch me play every day, uh, you know, I think you'll appreciate, uh, you know, what I do in center field. Um, you know, I don't play this game for, you know, for, for those people. You know, I play this game, you know, to to, to, uh, to gratify myself and also to, to come up big for my, for my teammates and my team. Offensively, last year you got off to a slow start. You caught fire down the stretch in the second half. This year, got off to a little slow start offensively again, and in July you've been on a tear. Is that a coincidence? Is there anything too coming on in the second half of the season, both of these two years? Uh, I hope to I hope to think that it is a coincidence. It's something that I don't I don't I don't like to do. Uh, you know, I don't want to get used to uh, you know getting off to a slow start because then you gotta uh, you know kind of dig yourself out of a hole. Uh, you know, hopefully one of these years I'm a you know. Uh, hit the ground running uh, from April and, and play uh, consistently throughout the whole season. But, uh, um, you know, I can't put my finger on it. It's just one of those things where um, I think maybe, you know, during an all-star break I go home, uh, you know, get a little home cook cooking, uh, relax, and, you know, just get my mind ready to go for the second push. Even early on in the season when things weren't going as you would have liked offensively, Matt Williams stuck with you. He expressed confidence in you, kept you in the leadoff spot. What type of conversations did the two of you maybe have, and how has that confidence impacted you? You know, we really didn't have, we, we haven't had any, uh, you know, any specific conversations about, uh, you know, him uh, keeping me in the leadoff spot or not. But, uh, you know, I, I've heard, you know, from afar, you know, the conversation that the, him he's had with the media. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just grateful, thankful that he, you know, he, he's, he's believed in me and, and, uh, and uh, you know, chosen to, to stuck with me, stick with me, I'm sorry. Half game up on the Braves as of this moment right now in the division. Outside of staying healthy. What's the one thing this team needs to do to come out NL East champions when it's all said and done? Uh, we're going to have to just uh, pitch the ball well, uh, make make plays defensively. Um, you know, just play a clean games. You know, we've uh, you know last night we let one go. Uh, in games like that, we have to we have to we have to buckle down and close out games and and uh, you know don't give teams second chances. All right, thanks for the time. Good luck tonight. Thank you. From facing Dan Colco to facing Henderson Alvarez. That's the assignment for Denard Spann, who will be in the batter's box moments from now. Game two straight ahead. The Nats at Miami. Brought to you by visitannapolis.org. Find it here.
Nats dugout can't wait to get this one underway. You're always wanting to get back at it the night after a tough one. And the Nationals still have a chance to make this a great road trip. It's four and three right now. Visit trainsearch.com. Find your local train comfort specialist dealer. Hard to stop a train. Really hard, so it's very muggy. 87 outside. 78 in here. Big time rainstorm late in the afternoon, but that is nothing unusual for South Florida. Bryce Harper. He's already at 300 hits for his career. It's been a long, long time. How about 100 years for young guys to do that? Doesn't happen very often. He's 10 for 31 with seven walks in his last 10 games. And with Worth out, Nate McLeod batting eighth. Everybody else bumped up in the lineup tonight against Henderson Alvarez, who has never beaten the Nats. Yeah, he's got a fastball that averages almost 95 miles an hour. Curveball. We'll go about 62 and he'll throw two of them a game. If you remember last time he faced the Nats, he throws almost like an Ephus curveball. The changeup is at 89. Now watch him on the first pitch. This is his ceremonial first pitch. He does this in every outing, and it's always a fastball. Kind of bends over, gets parallel to the ground with his chest. There it is. That's part of his routine. Always a fastball. And always a ball high. He only got over the top of his early delivery, but not over the heater. Why well, I said, why does he do it? He said it's just his deal, I guess. His ceremonial first pitch is Dave Van Horn, the wonderful Ford C. Frick, a radio announcer for the Marlins, calls it. And Denard's band fouls one back. Denard, a bunt base hit, a run scored, a walk last night, one for four. He has broken into the top ten in the league and runs with 64. And the guy hitting behind him has now scored more runs than any base runner in baseball. Anthony Rendon. Be interesting here in the first against the right hander with LaRoche up to the number three spot tonight. Two balls one strike. So Rendon 74 runs most in baseball. And then Adam LaRoche hitting 175 in July but he has 11 RBIs. Two one pitch. Span looks at ball three. That's eighth in the league in batting average at 250. Sixth in runs. Eighth in home runs. It's been an unusual road trip with only two long balls early in the trip in Colorado. Nothing since. That's a strike and the counts full. Second full year for DJ Rayburn. He's been around for several years as a minor league umpire working at this level. And the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, got in second base. Outfield around to the left for Span. Big, big gap in right center and kind of right up the middle of the field. That's a changeup on three and two. So the ceremonial fastball missed, and then about seven pitches later, so did the off speed. Yeah, he's got a power changeup at 89 card, but it looked like he kind of wished the fastball in there. He doesn't have his arm slot yet as you look at the Marlins defense for tonight. Baker gets the start. At first base instead of Garrett Jones. Garrett Jones with some not so good numbers against Steven Strasburg, so he gets the night off. You saw that one for 18, didn't you? I did. Computer sheet got Garrett Jones. Well, remember he played with the Pirates, and that's a team that Steven Strasburg has absolutely owned. Yeah. There's Rendon, and he takes a fastball inside. Denard's band, by the way, had come into that at bat. Five for 15. Against Alvarez. That was his second career walk. Rendon's three for 12 with a couple of RBIs against him. I would call some off speed here for Alvarez because right now Carpi is spinning out of there, doesn't have his arm slot. It's late and he's aiming the baseball. A lot of times you see catchers get a pitcher out in front and get the release point where it needs to be with an off speed pitch. But right now, the fastball is up. He's not controlling. Strike up in the zone. Hmm. If memory serves me well, Anthony Rendon is the first Washington National ever at this stage of the season to lead the league in runs. It's just not anything any of our leadoff guys did. Alfonso Soriano made a lot of noise back in 06 with the 40 40. This is really something for a second year guy. You might say, well, What's the big deal? That means somebody else is driving him in. 
it means he's setting the table for the RBI guys to follow. Well, he's getting on. He can run the bases, but you see Alvarez right now. He has no idea <laughs> with his fastball arm slot, and you can see the frustration after the pitch. Front side flying open. He's jumping at the hitter, and the arm is trailing everything. And I have no idea why Salva Lamaki is setting up so far away when there's no command. Well, they get a little lucky. That was a hot shot right at the shortstop. Echeverria and Valdez being turned the 6 4 3. Marlins turned their 98th of the year. They're in the top five in the league in double plays. And Adam LaRoche will bat now with the bases empty. Base hit. Sack fly last night. So even though the batting average hasn't been there in July at just under 180. He still has driven in nearly a dozen runs. Six for 13 against this pitcher with an RBI, two walks. That one will send Valdez Bean to his right, and the Nats are gone quickly thanks to the double play ball. Steven Strasburg brings his road show to Miami tonight. Keep an eye on that early. Steven just like we will taking on the Marlins who are fifth in the league at hitting fifth and runs and Jeff Baker's on an 11 game hitting streak 13 for 29 and of course last night he is the man who ended the ball game with that drive to the left field wall giving the Marlins their four run ninth Steven Strasburg 17th career start against Miami a fastball average in 94.5 curveball 79 change up 88 got hit hard his last start early suffered the six to four loss at Colorado against the Rockies on Wednesday kind of righted the ship after that and really got his fastball command late in that game all in all went five and a third gave up nine hits four runs against the Rockies struck out five and walked three hundred pitches in those five and a third innings. Set the defense for the Nats. Nate McLeod getting the start in right field. Jason Worth twisted his ankle last night. He's going to miss tonight. The rest the same. There's Nate. Big gaps to cover in this ballpark. McLeod very, very fast. He was talking about that before the game, and he thought there was more real estate to cover here at Marlins Park than Coors Field, where they just were. Well, it's every bit as big, maybe not quite as deep in the left center. Right center, 392 beyond the bullpens there. 418 dead center, that's crazy. Kristen Yelich, 31 hits in July, tied with Denard Spann among the league leaders. He's two for 11 against Strasburg with a run batted in, two walks career, steps in at 276. 
Wow, the Nats kept him off base last night five times. John Carlos Stanton was 0 for 3 with a walk. You would think that's a formula for victory against his Miami offense. Strasburg goes 3 and 0. That was 96 with movement to the outside edge. His first three starts against the Marlins, he went 3 and 0 with a 0 ERA in 18 innings. His last three, 1 and 3 with an 11 6 5 ERA. His first three, a 175 average against. The last four, a 347 average against. So the Marlins have figured out Steven Strasburg, and it's up to him to stop him here tonight after last night. Seven and four, 417 ERA, his most wins against any opponent. And a 3 2 now. He got in on the hands of Yelich. Ian Desmond takes care of that one out. Nice 3 0 comeback. Nicely done. Christian Yelich 0 for 6 against Nance pitching. So, Carb, I was looking at the home and road splits for Strasburg. Everybody making up a lot about how, you know, he's been good at home and not so good on the road. But get these numbers at home. 102 strikeouts at Nats Park versus just 13 walks. On the road, 61 strikeouts, 17 walks. But 102 Ks and 13 walks in the White Uni. How about that? <laughs> Domination. First pitch attack by Valdespin and a ball getting away from Bryce Harper. He pulled up and landed behind him. He had to lose that, right? Absolutely. Must have been looking into the bank of lights that runs along the first base side here. Appeared to lose it at the end. I mean, he just stopped. It looked like he had a beat on it, and he thought it was going to go off the wall, and he pulls up to play it off the wall, and it drops almost at his feet. Watch this. He's got a beat on it. Looks like he's got it. Thinks it's going to hit off the wall, and it lands right in front of him. Yeah, he looked up and had no idea. And if you look right over his head, Cart, there's a bank of lights which doesn't happen anywhere in Major League Baseball right where he was looking up yeah. straight over his head and he had to look into those lights. There's no way he saw that baseball. He just simply runs under it makes a play. Yeah unusual ballpark out in left field bank of lights actually a part of the roof here. So here's John Carlos Stanton. There is a base open ball one. He's nine for twenty six against Strasburg with three home runs. Great breaking ball, and the Nats really worked him over with pitches like that last night. Slider ish on the first curveball. Kind of had some tilt to it going away from Stan. Usually the curveball straight down, that one went from right to left. Pulls it on a hop. Anthony Rendon guns him out. Now a tough guy to face with two outs in a situation like this because Carl John Carlo is struggling with the guy behind him Casey McGee is doing a big time job of getting the bat on the ball and collecting hits. Third in the league in base hits. Thirty five multi hit games one fewer than Denard Spam. Casey McGee is hitting 330 against right handed pitching. Good looking fastball right to the edge. 97. Two home runs, but 59 RBIs. One for six career, two RBIs against Strasburg. And the 1 1 right to the corner again. He's got some sizzle on that heater tonight.
So these are the lights I'm talking about right up here at the top of the screen and they're right over Bryce Harper's head. And when he was going for that ball. He had to look right up into those lights right there. But I don't know if it shows it with that shot but they're right over where he's standing in left field. So he looked up right into those lights and how many ballparks in baseball have lights that are in play. Yeah. None. Even Tampa Bay with that crazy. Series of rings around the roof of that ballpark. Nothing that's right over fair territory. So a good battle here. Casey McGee, two balls, two strikes against Steven Strasburg. That's why McGee is so good at driving in runs. He lets the ball get deep. He gets on top of the baseball for the most part. He thinks about going the other way. A lot of younger hitters with runners in scoring position get all amped up. They try to catch the ball out in front, pull the baseball. But McGee's done such a nice job with runners in scoring position because he's not in a hurry. Not afraid to hit with two strikes. Two years ago, last year in the big leagues, he had 230 for the Pirates. 151 for the Yankees. He's totally changed his approach, but he's no match for that breaking ball. Strasburg pitches around the situation in left field. So the double man, Valdez being stranded, no score early. Top of the second, the Nats will have Wilson Ramos as their cleanup hitter tonight. Harper and Desmond to follow. Here's our Freight Real Works second inning. Nats do up what they've done career against Alvarez. And for Wilson, it's been a rough ride. He's made contact, only one strikeout. Bryce, a whole different story. Six hits, two home runs. And he had Desmond, four hits and a walk. One of those taters was off the Blackberry sign in Toronto a couple of years ago, if I remember right. That's right. Over the right center field fence, it hit a wall and it was still going when it hit. Is that the uh, home run that spawned the clown question? I believe it is. It might have been the night before, could have been that game. Well, we all remember that road trip. They ask him if, because the drinking age is 19 in Canada, if he went out and had a few. So that's a clown question, bro. Wilson Ramos. Head of Harper here. 12 pitches, five strikes for Henderson Alvarez first inning. He was scuffling with his command. And he got Rendon to hit the ball on the ground sharply, but it was right at the shortstop. That double play took care of that inning. Target away. Ramos got extension. Take a pretty good whack at that one. Buffalo back to fourth. Back in the cleanup slot. Matt Williams talking before the game about the hand strength of Wilson Ramos and how it's getting close. The power numbers aren't there, but the swing is coming back, and that's a process. 
Anytime you have any kind of invasive surgery, it takes about a year to get back to full strength. But Wilson Ramos working every day hard before the game to get that hand strength back to where it was before the surgery. Span, Zimmerman, Worth, and Ramos were the first four hitters on opening day. One ball, two strikes. Fastball up. Harper was fifth that day, then Desmond. Adam LaRoche was batting seventh, and Rendon eighth on opening day at City Field. What in the world? <laughs> How things change. Let's huh? see the dugout in August or September and say, you remember opening day lineup? And half the guys would sit there and go, no. Good take right there by Ramos. Borderline pitch. So that was in the 90s, and it came back off the backstop at about 74. Yeah. He's pitched pretty well against the Nets in terms of runs given up. But he's been matched up with some good opposing pitchers, and he's 0 3 with that 3 1 9 against Washington. Ball three. I think right now you have to wait him out. I know the Nats are aggressive. They like to go up there and swing, but he really doesn't have an idea where the fastball's going yet. You have a guy that's pretty good like Alvarez. Make him throw strikes. That was close, and what a great take. By Wilson Ramos, and Alvarez walks his first two leadoff men tonight. Bryce Harper last night. Yeah, went back to kind of the traditional stance and Noted the first time up and his swing looked real good. It's a bullet up the middle for his first hit, and that's the swing. I remember his rookie year, we used to say Bryce Harper hits home runs to left field like a right handed pull hitter, and that's a good sign. That's been a home run a lot of ballparks. And then that hot shot with the crazy bounce in between that was called an error. So he was two for four with an RBI last night. As mentioned, as you players call it, some ownage on Alvarez. Six for 13, a walk, two homers, four batted in career. And by the way, Alvarez just walked as many batters in the first four hitters of this game as he's done on the average in his last 13 starts. He's never walked more than two guys in any start recently. Well, he's, he's choking off his delivery, he's not following through. You know, when you see Henderson, Henderson Alvarez pitch, usually he throws through the target, but you're talking about a guy that's tied with four others for second with complete games in the National League in three, and right now he can't find the plate. Don't help him out. Make him throw strikes. Yeah, maybe more than one here. 2-0. and oh. Good take by Bryce. Not that close. The balance at the end of the delivery from Alvarez right now is all over the place, and that tells you he is searching for his mechanics. Pitching coach Chuck Hernandez concerned. <laughs> Didn't have to be. Just read the body language right now. He's searching. Fourteen of twenty-three missing so far. Harper, hard hit ball off the glove of Valdespi. Ramos will stop at second. Just enough hook on it. To get away from the second baseman. A very disciplined at bat right there by Bryce Harper. A plan that was executed to perfection. He was looking for something to pull, something close to him. He finally got it in a 3 1 count. So patient, patience pays off for Bryce Harper. Foot down early, very short swing, right to the baseball. And there goes the no hitter Bryce Harper style. And I don't think we've said that in a while, and it feels good. Ian Desmond since that rollicking series in Colorado last week has gone one for his last 15. It's another ball one. Yeah, looking at the mound, trying to feel for it. 
Watch Alvarez at the end of this. He kind of looks down at the mound, target away. Look where it misses. All the way to the other side of the plate, and he looks back at the mound like there's something wrong with it. Get him in the zone. I'll keep saying it until he does it. Good looking slider there. 84. Surprised they haven't gone to that sooner. Well, he got his release point right here with the slider, 84, and it just catches the outside corner. Good looking pitch on the Nissan pitch track. 1 1 to Desmond. Big gap in right center. This will be out of play. Braves, by the way, open up a series in L.A. tonight. Aaron Harang, Josh Beckett, they'll face Zach Grinke tomorrow. Nats are a half game up on Atlanta. Way inside, two and two. Well, Marlins the good thing are about six back. Excuse me, Carp. The good thing about Bryce Harper hitting behind Wilson Ramos is he's got some protection. Wilson does. The bad thing is, is Wilson Ramos going back up the bases right now. Bryce Harper on first base. Little traffic jam working with Bryce's speed and Wilson kind of taking it easy with his hamstring deal. Bryce will have to run the bases under control. Yeah. <laughs> My pass. Three and two. Yeah, you can sit here and say, yeah, got to get him early until he finds it. Well, can't go up swinging crazy. And FP. His observation about these hitters and this stuff all over the place holding true so far. Desmond wants to be on the attack here. He takes it and the bases are loaded. Don't help him out. Third walk. With a base hit. And that ties the most walks he's had in any game this year. Third time he's done it. I'm surprised Chuck Hernandez hasn't come out before this. And they're going to go check him. Look at this. Oh, no. That means something physical. This is one of the Marlins horses with seven wins and a 262 ERA. This is an injury trip, so this does not count as a trip to the mound. Mike Redmond is strolling out, too. It, you can just tell it's our mangle isn't where it usually is. We've seen him pitch a number of times. It's usually higher than it is. And he's not finishing, and that, that to me, is the biggest red flag. He's not finishing his pitches. This looks like one of those be honest to me conversations between the pitching coach and the young hurler. Manager, pitching coach, trainer, satisfied for now that all's well. I didn't see anything right there except for a ball, and, and, and you know nobody knows you better than your own guys. So Mike Redman, Chuck Hernandez, all the trainers in the Marlins dugout, really paying attention. Mike Kozak out to the mound. Sean Cunningham. They're all keeping an eye right now on Henderson Alvarez. Here's another guy who loves to be ultra aggressive. Danny Espinosa. He swung at ball one. Danny against Alvarez three for five. With a home run two RBIs. Well he bet strike right there. But you got to make him throw strikes. You can't let him off the hook right here. Now he's in a deep ball. Danny from the left side hitting a buck 89. Third base Ramos, second base Harper, first base Desmond.
That ball skipping into the mid. Gerald Saltalamaki. Pretty good block right here by Saltalamaki. You'll probably see Mathis catch the day game tomorrow. He's better known for his defense. Saltalamaki for his offense, but that's a nice block. I call that dirt that's disrupted below the mound a landing area, but it seemed like on that one he landed with a couple of feet scrambling all over the place. Check that out 20 balls, 14 strikes. Yeah, something's going on. Two walks this inning, three in the game and a base hit. 2 2 to Danny. And Espinosa strikes out for the 101st time this year. Well, that's the power change up from Henderson Alvarez 91 miles an hour right there and Espinosa over the top same pitch as strike one. Watch the first pitch watch the last pitch they're the same. Boom right on top of each other. And Espinosa over the top of both. Nate McClough. Few at bats lately over his last 10. So this is the 29th of July, and that's how many at bats Nate McLeod has had this month. He's three for five career against Alvarez. Hit that ball hard to left center field last night. Would have been a home run in a lot of places, right to the 386 mark here in Marlins Park. Ramos got back. Casey McGee almost turned an unassisted double play. Good job by Ramos of retreating. Well, that's just kind of way the season has gone for Nate McLeod this year. Another good at bat with nothing to show and almost hits into a double play. Good base running by Ramos to get back. And how close was this at third base? If his leg hit the base before Ramos's foot got there, that's an out. Yeah, he was kind of rolling over the bag. And I'm sure the Marlins clubhouse and the video guys had a look at that. Steven Strasburg now with two outs. Alvarez goes back to the full windup. I was just thinking, watch him walk the pitcher now. Well, he's got to take a strike. I know that. Or you would think he's taking a strike. This is where he just goes stand like a statue, see what happens. At least he gets two strikes. Was his 40th pitch of the game. Strasburg off the trademark area of his bat didn't break it. And the count's two and two. Right there by Strasburg might have bought him a 2 2 slider right here because he's getting closer on the fastball. You throw him three in a row, he might make the adjustment, catch it out front a little more for a single. If I'm Alvarez right here, I'm going to throw him a slider. Throw the sliders because you don't want to fill it up. You know you don't have your command. 
Our Mercedes Benz shows you every pitch up except one. Counts 2 2, no score early. And that'll be outside. He threw him the slider. And the count goes to 3 and 2. Spit all over it. Focused. To the right side. Valdez speed. Somehow, Henderson Alvarez pitches a scoreless first and second innings. Out for his second inning of work. Coming into today, Strasburg led the National League in strikeouts. His off speed stuff has been deadly this season, and he's working deeper into games than he has previously in his career. Yet he carried a 3.67 ERA to the mound tonight. So, why the disconnect? Nationals people say it's because of Strasburg's fastball command, that he hasn't been commanding the fastball as well as he needs to and as well as he could. And you look at the numbers and it kind of plays itself out in that regard. Dug up some numbers on Brooks baseball in terms of Strasburg's batting average against and slugging percentage against off of his fastball this season. And you see it there. Hitters this year hitting 329 off his fastball, slugging nearly 500 off of his fastball, up significantly from where it's been in past seasons. Strasburg, as I said, his off-speed stuff is still great. When he gets to two strikes, he has the ability to blow hitters away. But Matt Williams and the Nationals coaches say that he needs to do a better job commanding the fastball, and that'll lead to better success for him. Well, he seems to have a pretty lively one tonight. We saw 96 with movement first inning. He topped out at 97. Well, he's been getting stronger as the year goes on, but you know, for a guy that threw 98 to 100 his whole life until he had the Tommy John surgery, it's been an adjustment for Strasburg. You can make mistakes in the zone with 98 mile an hour fastball, and guys aren't going to get to it. When you throw 94 to 96, a different story. You have to throw to a corner, you have to hit your spots. Because in today's game, you have guys that you see every single night coming out of bullpens throwing 96, 98, 99 miles an hour. So that isn't what it used to be. And when you see 94, it can look like a beach ball and you have to throw it to a spot. There's a fastball. Hit straight down after an 80 curveball for a strike. And it's 0-2 to Marcelo Zuna. And so just to add on to what Dan was saying, in 2010, the fastball average 97.3. 2011, 95.8. 2012, 95. This year, 94. So every year it's gone down a click, and when it does, you have to throw it to a spot. That one right there, 97. Strasburg's gone six innings or more 17 times. Out of 22 starts, he's gone seven or more nine times with a longest of seven and two thirds. That's a big hop. Espinosa really had to back up, and he throws out Marcelo Zuna. 
All right, pick any three Nats games and get a fourth game for free. You only get it for free. You get a hat on top of it, a new era cap with a summer catch four pack. Visit nationals.com slash summer to get your pack today. Nice looking Nats family right there making the road trip down to South Florida. Kid's got his picker on, that's what I'm talking about. Jared Saltalamaki of the catcher. One for five career against Strasburg. Had a base hit and a sack fly in that ninth inning last night that drove in one of their final runs. Kind of also adding on to what Dan said back in the day when Steven threw 98 all the time. He was effectively wild. You didn't know where it was going. And, you know, he's matured as a pitcher and reined his command in to where he's a strike thrower now. When you look at his numbers, 164 strikeouts, just 30 walks. So, you know, back in the day when he was throwing 98, he didn't know where it was going all the time. And as a hitter, you didn't know where it was going all the time. And that's advantageous to the pitcher line. Now guys are comfortable. They go up there and they know they're not going to get a walk. They know they're going to get a fastball. And generally speaking, they try to get on that first one. You and I were sort of thinking about the same word. I was going to say not a comfortable at bat. Yeah. One two with one out. Breaking ball just missed. So the more refined Steven Strasburg might be having problems with that fastball because guys know he throws strikes. Back in the day, they weren't comfy up there. They didn't know where it was going. Look out. It might hit you. Sal Telemachia with a high drop to center. Closer to the girders than it was the center field fence. Two outs. Dan has more. Guys, one more thing to add on. Randy Nor told me before the game that especially because Strasburg stuff is off speed stuff is so good, that change up in that curveball, hitters are looking for something straight and they want to attack that fastball. And if they get one early in the count, they don't want to get behind two strikes and end up having to deal with that off speed stuff. If they get a fastball, they're searching for it. They look for that pitch straight. And if he's not commanding it the way that he wants to, that's another reason why that batting average and slugging percentage could be rising off of that pitch. I think you should just chunk one off the fish tank back there and make everybody feel uneasy. Hit the mascot a few times. Go nuke Lelouch yeah. on a warm up yeah. toss or take, take out one of them piranhas. You get with that's a piranha right there in the middle. <laughs> 2 0. And a bouncer off to Espinosa from Jeff Baker. Steven Strasburg, an impressive second inning. He's given up one lights aided double. So our Honda Dua, our pregame guest, Denard Spann. For appearing on tonight's show, he gets the lead off in the third. It's a good prize. You buy T Mobile. 
Marlins Park, it's gorgeous. From the outside, you go by on the freeway, it looks like something landed from another galaxy. That's just beautiful. Pretty good inside, too, compared yeah. to the old football ballpark. If it's free, it's me, and I want three. Free T-shirt giveaway at all Virginia Cox Solutions stores. Cox and Master are teaming up to give away these shirts for a limited time. So get your shirts now. Those will go for big at a party, I believe. First time through the batting order, Henderson Alvarez threw only two first pitch strikes. There were only six official at bats. The Nats went one for six, double play ball, three walks, and a base hit by Bryce Harper. Span walked and then doubled up on the Rendon hot shot to short. Good swing at 94 up. STG takes us inside the numbers. Here's a surprising stat we haven't seen all year. More game winning runs scored by Denard Span than anybody else. Overall, he has scored 64, 10th in the league. Boy, he saw Alvarez on that. He's not feeling good. He took a line drive off his shins two, two starts ago. And, and the reason, you know, it didn't go there early is because he went eight innings his next start. But if you saw the follow through right there, he, he kind of winced, walked around the mound. So you're wondering if it's the lower half with Alvarez. Could be sporting a big time shin burger, but, you know, last time out, he went eight innings against the Braves, gave up just two runs and six hits. Good eye by Denard Spann. But two starts ago against the Giants, he only went two and two thirds, took taking that line drive off his shin. Denard Spann's on base percentage is inching its way toward 350. That's right in there. Running fastball. 95. A guy who doesn't strike out often couldn't pull the trigger. Two Ks. Well, you could say he let the Marlin off the hook last inning. That's exactly what happened. He had the bases loaded, him searching for the strike zone, and couldn't have come at a worse time for him to figure it out. Now he's got the release point, the command, and the fastballs down the zone. The biggest pitch of that inning. Was the first one to Danny Espinosa. He, was. he had just walked two out of three men. Danny swung at ball one. It was a changeup. Swung at another ball later in the at bat. And then McLeod lined out. Strasburg battled, but he grounded out. And that was it. Well, I think we just got to the bottom of the Alvarez mystery because he did not even budge for that bunt right there. He stayed right on the mound, didn't even take a false step for it. Great idea by Rendon to bunt then. Yeah. Eighty one stays up and in. Two balls, one strike. Ninety five upstairs tough to catch up. That man's 24 years of age signed by the Blue Jays at 16. And then after the 2012 season. Bob did that mega deal between the Jays and. The Marlins. Rendon a defensive swing. Aldous Bean. Got him by a step two outs. Adam LaRoche. Is batting above fourth as a starter for the Nats for the first time. Bob FP and Dan here at Marlins Park. The Nats have one more game on this trip tomorrow afternoon, then home for a week. Can't wait. Business to take care of here. 
Adam LaRoche had a pinch hitting appearance in the number two hole this year. June 15th at St. Louis, he got an RBI on a bases loaded walk. But tonight's the first time he has hit higher than fourth yes. as a Washington National. It's definitely time to get home. Got home last night. My suitcase was trying to sneak out of the room. It smelled so bad. This is where we uh, yeah, this just take our sport yeah. coach back to the hotel, stand them up in the corner, yep. and get ready for tomorrow. This is where it gets gnarly. Oh, two to LaRoche. And he drives one high in the air to left center. Marcelo Zuna waiting for it. One, two, three, third. Pitchers dueling and doing it well. Now Strasburg back to work. Looking along about a week ago until Ryan Zimmerman pulled the hamstring in Colorado. And then last night, Jason worked with the Nats up big. Nice swing to right field. Tried to go for two. Yeah, I think he was kind of kicking himself after the game for trying to go for a double up six to nothing at that point. So you look at a little rollage of the ankle right there. He said it got worse this morning. And those things can be tricky. It's not a high ankle sprain. Those are the ones that last forever. So a low ankle sprain kind of around his foot area below the ankle. Jason worth a guy that's as tough as anybody and he'll be back out there as soon as he can. We just hope it's not for long. A Danny Echeverria leads off shows bunt ball one. Bottom of the third underway. He's on a seven game hitting streak to shortstop who bats eighth. Had a single and a huge triple. Against Soriano in the ninth inning last night. Strasburg missed his spot. Ramos wanted that ball inside edge. Echeverria three for 15 career against Steven with a pair of RBIs. With three and all in the first hitter of the game, Christian Yelich came back to get him. Never want to walk the number eight man, giving the pitcher in a scoreless game a chance to move a runner. Got the borderline call. Low. First walk. Marlins have their second base runner. We talked about in the open Steven Strasburg this year on the road hasn't had success everybody talking about. It. But he's been a guy historically that's done well 
on the road. This year just hasn't happened. One and six with the 509. And we mentioned in the open tonight that the teams that he's faced on the road, Phillies twice, they're 14 games under. Arizona 14 games under. Colorado 19 games under. Miami and the Mets under 500. He's faced the Pirates, the Giants, the Cardinals, and the Brewers on the road. So we really don't have a reason other than he's really a creature of habit that you know has a routine. And we've talked about it. Players are able to get into that routine a lot easier at home than on the road. You know your mound. You know the bullpen mound. Everything's the same, and on the road, everything's different. Alvarez seven sacrifice bunts this year. As a rule handles the bet well he also has nine hits. Thus the 220 batting average. That's your Maria. Speed, but just seven of 11 stealing this year. Marlins have the second fewest steals in the league at 43. Giants 39. Not a running ball club, but they've got some guys who can move it. Deadens the ball beautifully. LaRoche to Espinosa, sacrifice perfect. 3 4. All right. This one does not have a sprained ankle and it's a lot shorter. First 25,000 fans will receive a Jason Worth Guard Gnome on Tuesday, August 5th. That's against the Mets. You get that at all gates while supplies last. And be sure to follow hashtag Worth Goes Gnome on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook for the Gnome's road trip adventures. I'm trying to think of where I saw the Gnome today. I thought I saw him windsurfing over by Key Biscayne. I saw him deep sea fishing and they were using him for bait. He was on a hook. <laughs> now that is cruel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the beard hanging off in the water, kind of like a lure. You know, if they really wanted to get creative, they'd throw him on that thing in left center field and go for a ride on one of those Pinocchio dolphins. I'd get out the phone to I, take that. That's where I put them. I don't videotape much, but that would have to go on. Maybe I'm one of those great pink herons now at the bottom. Seagull's mouth, maybe, or that is that a bald eagle? And Good enough to be a strike. It could be 0-2. Could is a nice word. As opposed to should, should have been. been. Good change up. Wow, 88. Diving on Kristen Yelich. Look just like the fastball and under the bat. Perfect. No score. Runner in scoring position. Second time the Marlins have had a man at second. And Yelich able to hold on the high fastball, 2-2. Two -two. First time through the order. Miami goes one for seven with a walk and a sacrifice. Wow. He's been around the edge on almost every pitch here, and it's three and two. Very close right here. Let's see where this one misses. Everything down in the zone, though. That's the key. Good frame by Ramos. And got a very big strike zone right now from DJ Rayburn. Those are good pitches. Three two one out. Got him. Ball foul tipped. 
into the mid of Ramos 96. And for Steven Strasburg, strikeout number two. So just doing a nice job so far, keeping everything down, whether it's the changeup or the fastball that's jumping out of his hand. 96 right there with some run on it. And Yelich way late on the fastball from Strasburg. Look how tardy he was. Must have had changeup in the back of his head because he was nowhere near that heater. Strikeout leader Steven Strasburg started the night with 163. Johnny Cueto racked up a whole bunch against the Nats the other day. Strasburg is already back in the top 10 in innings. This is his 140th inning of the year. And Jordani Valdespin hit that ball up in the air, tailing away from Bryce Harper first time that Bryce lost in the lights. It was a one out double in the first. That Steven retired Stanton and McGee ground ball strikeout to get a out of that jam. The curveball tonight from Strasburg has been more like a slur. That short little tight curveball that has slider action to it at 80, 81, 82 miles an hour. And I asked Steve McCaddy about that, why sometimes it comes out like that. And he said it's more of an overthrow for Strasburg than you know that natural 12 6 high to low curveball you see from him. 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. This one has a little bit of sweep to it. Just not getting to the fastball right now. And that'll even things up 2 2. Change his eye line right there. Go with the change up. He's set up for it if you want to throw. It. One up here in your eyes. One down at the ankles, a little bit slower. Now, this being career 2 for 7 against Steven Strasburg. He's playing in his 10th game since his call up. 7 for 28. I tried to go down there, 89, just missing. Boy, Strasburg looked back like, how'd you take that one? It's exactly what he wanted to do right there, 89, down low, and he spit on it. Now this means that two pretty good swings tonight. Wilson Ramos is the Nats cleanup hitter tonight. He walked leading off the second. He's next.
A hit, a walk, two strikeouts. On this day, four years ago, the Nationals traded Matt Capps, who had gone to the All Star game for the Nats, to Minnesota for a young catcher by the name of Wilson Ramos. Interesting day in the career of Mike Rizzo, and of course, for that young man who had come up through the Minnesota organization. They signed him at the age of 16 and 04 out of Venezuela. Well, I'd say it's a pretty good trade. The Nats got a left handed pitcher, Joe Testa, along with Ramos for Matt Caps. Breaking ball in there, 79, fourth inning underway. You know, I was looking at the video in the break. It was the Giants and it was Joe Panic, and he hit a one hop seed right off the left shin of Wilson Alvarez. Or he went out there, Henderson Alvarez, and he went out there, grabbed the ball, threw it to first, got Panic out. It was a gutty play by Henderson, but it got him good in the shin. It seems like it's not hurting now. Ball came tailing back in. He's got a lively fastball. We saw it when he was missing, and now we're seeing it when he's throwing it for strikes. Wilson Ramos in this series 0 for 2 pair of walks, including a bases loaded base on balls last night. That ball's hammered. Just below the facing of the upper deck down to the right field corner. Last home run. July 9th. Off Bud Norris at Baltimore. Was an EFIS pitch at 58. Well, he throws about two of these a game, and for Henderson Alvarez, watch the curveball right here at 57 miles an hour. It averages 62 miles an hour, so this one below average. And Ramos was on it. If that thing broke down a little bit, he had a pretty good hack at it. And it gives him the heater. That's a two hopper to Echeverria. Next up, the only Nat with a base hit tonight, Bryce Harper. On the Nats win, everyone wins all season long. When the Nats win and score seven or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu prices at PapaJohns.com by entering promo code Nats50. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's official pizza of Bryce Harper and your Washington Nationals. Harper able to hook one over to the right side first time. Didn't kill it. Well placed. Valdez Speed went after it, deflected off of his glove into right field. So Bryce has had some good swings in the series. He's now three for five, has an RBI. Eleven hits, seven walks in eleven games since coming off the DL and add another. Two for two. Well, with Jason Worth out with the sprained ankle, Ryan Zimmerman out for who knows how long with that hamstring. Bryce is starting to pick it up, and he's going to have to. When you got guys out, other guys have to step up. And right now, Bryce Harper sticking with that stance that looked good last night. It looks even better tonight, two for two and another single. The biggest thing about that stance, Carp, is his head's just staying real still. It's not moving all over the place. Allows him to see the ball better with his hand eye. That's all he needs. Keep that head still. He's going to hit. Perfect fastball to the edge on Ian Desmond. 
Good at bat for him. He walked to load the bases with nobody out in the second. Nats could not score. Hope for three in the series, two walks. Well, that's kind of what I'm talking about with Bryce's swing. Now, watch how still his head is. You know, early on, coming off the DL, the game's moving fast, and now all of a sudden, see that head just staying right there. I mean, it didn't move at all. And that allows him to stay behind the baseball, catch the ball out in front, make good decisions on you know, what pitches coming and balls and strikes. Alvarez career 22 and 28 80th start tonight. Seventeen for the Marlins last year when he went five and six. Had right shoulder problems put him on the 60 day DL. After early July. Ian Desmond strikes out. One hundred twenty five Ks for him. And it's up to Danny Espinosa. Who struck out with the bases loaded for the first out two innings ago. To his left, down to speed. One out hit by Bryce Harper. He has the Nats only two hits through four in a scoreless duel. Like me, and second of all, keep a still head. If your head's still, you can hit the baseball. Look at Bryce Harper's head. We're gonna put the line kind of drop right where his head was, and watch where it ends up right on the line. So he's not jumping at the baseball anymore. His head's staying still, and he's rotating around to his backside. And by keeping that head still, I mean as simply as I can put it, you see the baseball big, you see rotation, you notice ball and strike earlier. And he has the bat speed where he doesn't have to jump out and generate any power. But like I said, it's human nature when either A, you come to spring training, or B, you miss a lot of games to go get the ball, go jump out and get the ball. Now he's letting it come to him, keeping his head still. What a difference. Yeah, that video, by the way, those swings, his two hits tonight. Pulling both, hitting the second one with great authority. And here's Steven Strasburg for his fourth inning of work. This time John Carlos Stanton. Strasburg got him on a bouncing ball to Rendon first time up.
Target in means fastball. It's off the plate inside. Ramos wanted it in there again. That missed by plenty. Three and one. Walked him. And Stanton, his 63rd walk of the year, third most in the league. All right, you know what time it is. Time to tweet your photo using hashtag Mass and Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in future broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T. Casey McGee struck out first time. As mentioned, Casey McGee only two home runs. 59 RBIs and this year he has struck out about half as much as guys with similar RBI totals. So he's not going to clear the bases with three run homers, but he's going to put the bat on the ball. He's one for seven career against Strasburg. Double play guy if you can get the ground ball. He has hit into 20 of them this year. Well, he's a guy that you might think about switching up the coverage at second base. Normally speaking, you know, Danny Espinosa would cover on a Stanton steal. But on a fastball, you might have Ian Desmond cover right here because Casey McGee likes to hit behind the runner. And you might think that's the most in baseball. 20 GIDPs, and it is. Get up. Yeah. Hard one to say. Call it. We could call it the giddy up step. And that's off to the right side. One one. Trying to hit behind the runners. So generally speaking, if you got a right-handed hitter up there, you think, well, he's gonna you pull the baseball and you have the second baseman cover. But with McGee, a guy that has an inside-out swing, you might switch up the coverage. And Ian Desmond and Danny Espinosa communicate between every pitch on who's gonna cover the base on a steal, and it's with their glove. Ball driven to right and it'll be out of play. Miami Marlins trying to get back to 500 tonight. They'd have to win six in a row to do it. And nine of their last 10. The Nats are 11 over. If you weren't with us earlier, Braves at Dodger Stadium later tonight behind Aaron Harang against Josh Beckett. Breaking ball boy he's been so close yeah. on so many two strike pitches tonight. And out to center span. Coming way in. That's too close for him. That thing didn't carry it all. And Danny Espinosa out to grab it. One out. Tanner Roark. Tomorrow against Brad Hand to wrap up the road trip. And then Thursday night, the Phillies are in for four. Geo Cliff Lee Thursday. Fister, Roberto Hernandez Friday. Zimmerman, AJ Burnett Saturday. Strasburg returns on Sunday against Cole Hamels. So three consecutive seven o'clock games and a 135 Sunday against the Phils. The Phillies who are now 14 games under 500 and 12 and a half out. Deadline two days away. What team's going to cover that spark? Ryan Howard going to be there. Chase Sudley going to be there. Rumors about Jimmy Rollins to the Giants. He hit his 14th homer of the year tonight. Applebaum. Hamels. 
You're talking nucleus. Phillies have a 2 0 lead at New York in the fifth inning. Grady Sizemore hit his first of the year for the Phillies today. So a lot of times the throwovers come from Randy Nor on the bench, but the pitchers have liberty to throw over when they want to on their own. Steven Strasburg very attentive to base runners lately. And I would say most of the time Strasburg throwing over on his own. Curveball to Marcelo Zuna and Ramos out to cover it. That is severe damage. Ramos waves off Strasburg, makes a good play. And LaRoche just in case Stanton went wandering. So two outs and John Carlo the scoring position. Well, I'm going to go one up on you, partner, and say that was a great play just because Wilson Ramos went a long ways for this, and it's a very athletic play for a catcher. Watch him barehand this spin, pick up the target, and throw a strike right on the money with a fast runner. So look how far Ramos had to go out for that and look at the throw and the arm strength to get a speedy Ozuna. And that's a throw that is so easy to tail into a runner. He did a great job of keeping it outside of that baseline for LaRoche. Well if you've ever made a play where you've had to spin around real quick it's hard to pick up your target because it's a blur. You're just trying to pick up the first thing you see and it's, it's not easy. Your Sal Tolomachia flew out to Denard Spann first time. Third ball of beauty. I mean if you want to try it at home everybody spin around real quick and throw something at your little brother. Just make sure it's not enough. Yeah, hard. A nerf ball yeah like a nerf ball. Do any damage. Challenge fastball. And back to the left. One ball, two strikes on the Miami catcher. Didn't move much. Great changeup. So here in South Florida tonight, it's a big ballpark. Guys that are tough to hit, scoreless pitchers matchup. Hitters not having much fun.
There's no score at the top of the fifth inning. It's been a pitcher's duel, but the Nats did have their chance. It was early in the game, the second inning. They loaded the bases with nobody out. Danny Espinosa struck out on a Henderson Alvarez changeup, and then Nate McClough. The great swing and nothing to show. Casey McGee with a beautiful play, almost doubled up Wilson Ramos. And Steven Strasburg with a nice at bat ended up grounding out to second base. So that's where this one stands still 0 0. 73 pitches for Alvarez. <laughs> 42 strikes coming into this inning. Here's Nate McLeod who hit that little looping liner to Casey McGee at third. And he goes deep left center again. Marcelo Zuna one out. No, no, it's not Martina McNugget. It's Martina McBride, legendary country music artist. She's going to perform at Nats Park on Saturday, August 16th. Don't miss the last Nats Live post game concert presented by Travel Channel. Free with your Nats game ticket. Visit nationals.com slash Nats Live for tickets. Martina McBride, that's going to be a good one. And the Pirates in town for that one. They're hanging in there. Two games back of Milwaukee coming into this evening. Strasburg, that bouncing ball to the right side with the bases loaded. He fouled off a couple pitches before that and gave Henderson Alvarez a pretty good battle. Stevens thrown 66 pitches, 37 strikes. Back inside the numbers with STG. So at home, Henderson Alvarez, second best National League pitcher with a 164. Kershaw fourth, huh? Yeah, he's not at the top of that list. That's right. Johnny Cueto's went down Saturday, didn't he? And a big breaking ball drops in. Strasburg watched it. Strikeout number four. Two quick outs in the fifth. Denard Spann coming up. It looked to me like Jared Salta Lamacchia might have thought that was the third out. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, let's go to the dugout. Oh, no, uh, let's not. They were thinking about bringing that rule in in the late 90s when all the offense was going on. It's all turned around for the pitchers now. Well, it's turned around for Henderson Alvarez for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what's going on with that left shin or if that was the case, but if it was, it's either gotten loose or he got in there and took a couple at field liquid gel because he's loosened up big time. A tail of two times through the lineup. First time, two first pitch strikes, three walks. Second time, seven first pitch strikes, did not walk a batter. Everything downhill out front and on top all of a sudden and he was nowhere near what he's doing right now in the first two innings. O two oh Nets, O one oh Marlins. And an O two to span here in the fifth. He gets a hold of one. That ball heading for the track. Stanton back. He will pull it in with about five feet to spare. Denard Span a big time bid for his second home run of the year. Alvarez keeps it in the yard and keeps it scoreless.
presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Well, some guys having a hard time getting bat on ball tonight. Strasburg tough, a one hitter. Alvarez tough through five, a two hitter. Well, he's been great. The fastball's been jumping out of his hand. He's kept everything down the zone. And they had Henderson on the ropes and they let him off the hook. But Steven Strasburg has been fantastic. DC area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a donation of $37. The children's in at NIH for every strikeout by Nats pitcher this season. Three tonight. He's pitched through a couple of walks and a double. Bottom three. First up, Jeff Baker. Lines one. Espinosa jumped too high. He's got the arm to save the day. That might have been a bit of a changeup, but Danny was up off the ground before the ball got there. He's got the makeup cannon. He's all right. Ball probably hit him right in the heel, jumped a little bit too high. I'm going to surprise himself with the hops. Stay with it. And looked like he threw a nasty slider right there, LaRoche, but Baker probably thought he caught it, slows down a little bit, then has to speed up. Echeverria now. Good looking curveball 81. But, but that's playing like a slider tonight. We, we've yeah. talked about this in a couple of starts. This ball just has. Watch this. I mean, that's a slider, even though it's 81. Good swing by Echeverria. Nate McLeod over there to cover it. At full speed, approaching the corner before he could slow down. And now, Strasburg's given himself a chance for a quick inning with the pitcher coming up. And. We said this about Jordan last night. Maybe Steven taking a page out of Jordan's notebook, but he's working so fast, we're having trouble showing you the replays of the pitch before. It's all right. And usually with the Steven Strasburg start, we have plenty of time to show you the replay, but he has got some kind of work rate going too, going right after the Marlins hitters, being very aggressive with all of his pitches. Yeah. Love it. Working quickly, great as long as you don't rush your mechanics, right? Right. Boom. <laughs> right in there. Alvarez good at bad first time a sacrifice after an edge of a real walk back in the third. That ball gashed in the left on a slider that curveball. That looks like a slider. And I think he went guessing and he guessed right. Well I think he was just sitting fastball and ran into a curve and caught it out front. And watch how short this is. Yeah, got fooled, kept his hands back, good swing. Watch, he's out front, keep your hands back, stay through it. Got the sweet spot on it. He's aboard with two outs. And here's Kristen Yelich. Ground ball to short, strikeout. Bangs that one to the inside edge. Well, Henderson Alvarez wants to steal second. LaRoche is playing behind him. He just took four hard steps right there and stopped. He's saying, hey, it's a 0 0 game. There's two outs on get there. And I think LaRoche is going to come hold him on now after that. Now Strasburg stepping off and they're going to get it straight. And I think Matt Williams deciding to play behind Alvarez because of that shin burger he's featuring, not thinking he can run. He wants the win. He wants to get in the scoring position. And he almost went. All the fastballs from Strasburg tonight, 72 percent. Season average, 58. That ball not fouled by much. And missed Brian Onora 
third base umpire by inches. Ball gets away, thinks he's got a shot. And Alvarez gets in there on a wild pitch. I'm you, he's been trying to get to second this whole that bat. Reads a change up in the dirt, takes off. Ramos with the mask off, throwing flat footed. Watch Alvarez read it. Little hesitation, but like I said, he'd been trying to figure out a way to get to second base. He got there. Good effort by Ramos once it got past him, but a little smile out there to Alvarez. 2-2 two, two now. It's a big 90 feet with a guy like Yelich in the batter's box. He's driven in 35 runs this year. So far, the Nats have controlled him in this series. But he's been one of the more prolific hitters in the league in July with 31. Fastball up. Way late. Super tardy. Bottom of the fifth inning, no score. Four total hits in the game. A bouncer right back to Steven. He'll run over to LaRoche and underhanded. And the Marlins have stranded their fourth base runner. 2 3 4 for the Nets. Rendon starts it in a moment. The D.C. Lottery presents the Friday Fun Concert Series at the fairgrounds. It's two hours pre and post game each Friday. It's fun to play the D.C. Lottery. Fastest sailboat in Miami goes flying by. Trying to make it here for the top of the six to see Rendon, LaRoche, and Ramos. It's our Honda do-up. And what they're doing against the division this year. So that's two, three, and four. Ramos, first time cleanup in a while, maybe since opening day. And then, of course, Adam LaRoche batting higher than cleanup as a starter for the first time as a net. Rendon, 6 4 3 and a 4 3. Well, you're just wondering. If getting out of that second inning jam like Alvarez did is going to take its toll on him here third time around. You know, he's made the adjustments. The fastball has been great. He's down the zone. And whatever he had going on early with his release point. Is gone but. 
Sometimes those big innings and getting out of jams manifest themselves later in the game. Pitch count three apart, 82 for him, 79 for Strasburg through five. The only hits, two singles to right by Bryce Harper. Span, Ramos, and Desmond have walked. Rendon hits one hard to right center. Heading for the gap, and that ball will one hop the 392 mark, stay in play, or was it out of play? Umpire signaling ground rule double. That's why Rendon slowed down. Had that not hit over the green wall, could have been a triple. Might have been. But I saw Jeff Kellogg held up two fingers and he said, Tony, two bags. And Rendon with his patented swing going the other way. That's where the pop usually is. And Giancarlo Stanton holds up both hands, says it went out of play, and Rendon cruises into second with a leadoff double. Smart thing Stanton did there, though. He played it back quickly. Not sure what the umpire was calling behind him. And Anthony Rendon has his 44th extra base hit. Big spot for LaRoche. Hits one out to center. This will be interesting. Rendon, I don't think, is going anywhere. That's a gun by Osuna. He got way behind that ball and had full momentum coming forward as he caught it. See, even though Adam LaRoche with 55 RBIs wanted to drive in Rendon, he wanted to do it to the right side. And he'd be the first one to tell you right now that he's got to get that ball to the right side and advance a runner at least in that situation. 0 0 ball game, top of the sixth inning. Pitcher's duel. Yeah, he's frustrated. Wilson Ramos next. Well, things happening quickly here. Third time around. Guy swinging early in the count. That ground ball, one out too late. Over to third. Rendon. It'll be up to Harper, who's two for two. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank with our minor league report. We check in on 22 year old AJ Cole. Now, these numbers combined at double A Harrisburg, triple A Syracuse. Down at the bottom. And then since Syracuse, five starts, three and oh. And then eight to one strikeout to walk ratio. AJ Cole. I'm sure Mike Rizzo's answered a few phone calls in the last couple of weeks about AJ. You would imagine. Or maybe not. He was obtained with Blake Trine in the Michael Morse deal January 16th of 13. So, we've seen Blake at the major league level. That one could pay off for the Nats a long time down the road. Bryce Harper looking for RBI number 14. Check out this list. Youngest outfielders. 300 career hits. Tony Canigliaro on that list. Ken Griffey Jr., Mickey Mantle, Hank Aaron. He's the eighth youngest player to reach 300 hits since 1914. <laughs> Mel Ott, L. K. Line, Cesar Cedeno. It's a good list. Fantastic. Two and one. How interested is Henderson Alvarez right now in Bryce Harper in a 0 0 game with first base open and Bryce being two for two? Not very. He's seen it big. Quite a play by Sal Telemachia, who just now realized where the ball was. Sitting in the Left handed batter's box. Well, that's the risk you take if you're trying to get Bryce Harper to chase, throw one in the dirt, and Rendon scoring. That's when the pitcher just yells, feet, 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 and that's how you find out where the ball is. That was the changeup. 
Rice is now eight for 15 career against this right hander. That ball skips in. That was an unintentional intention. Well, maybe Ian Desmond can just pretend they put up the four fingers and take it personally. That's Alvarez fourth walk of the night. Ian Desmond has walked and struck out. Well, you know he's going to be hacking right here early in the count, so that's probably what they're talking about. What do we want to throw right here in a first and third situation? Should Bryce Harper steal? Where's the throw going? I don't know that I'd throw through right now if I was Mike Redmond. It's because I got my pitcher on cruise control. You throw through something funny happens. Rendon scores. You got a one nothing game. I think Bryce is going to let Ian hit. Well, sometimes hitters against a power guy like all that hitting room on the right side too. It goes over that way but Desmond just got overpowered by a pitch in on it. The Nationals have stranded six. The Marlins have left four. Still scoreless middle of the six. Of walks here and there, but both guys have done a great job of shutting the door. And the Marlins have to feel good about the way their guys turn the night around. And Steven Strasburg, one of his more consistent evenings lately. Well, he's dealing. And Henderson Alvarez didn't have it early on. A gutty performance from Alvarez, but Steven Strasburg, absolutely some of the best stuff we've seen all year with the fastball command, keeping it down the zone. He was a little bit up in Colorado, but he made the adjustments late in the game and really leaned on his fastball. And that's been the story here tonight. The heater from Strasburg. He's thrown it 70 percent of the time, and it's been down the zone. It's been good. Valdez Bean has had the best at bats off Strasburg all night for the Marlins. He will lead off bottom of the sixth. 79 pitches, 47 strikes for the Nats starter. Trying to even his record at eight and eight. That one staggered Wilson Ramos. Check it out real time. Where to get him? Right the mask. Direct hit. I was still trying to get untangled from my earpiece after going on camera. I missed it. DJ Rayburn giving him some extra time by housekeeping around home plate. Great changeup. Aldis Bean taken aggressive from the heels swings. Mercedes tracks a beauty. When you talk to hitters at phase Tanner Roar, they say that everything comes out of the same window and everything looks the same. And with Strasburg tonight, based on that short, tight little slurvy curve he's throwing, the changeup of the fastball, they're all coming out of the same window. 
his release point and the pitches all look the same and that's why the Marlins have been off balance the majority of the night. And down the speed gets a fastball just turns it right up the middle. He's two for three. And the only out he made was a line drive at Bryce Harper. Yeah, he's seeing him big tonight. Like I said, double line out now, base it up the middle. And yeah, Strasburg had none chance for that. I was hit too hard. Well, John right. Carlos Stanton now. Well, the book on Stanton is hard in, soft away. Let's see how Strasburg approaches this. To me, the biggest at bat of this pitcher's duel. Good pitch. Why is it a good pitch? Because now the other side's opened up. The Elvis Bean has not attempted a stolen base yet with Miami. Stole 10 bases for the Mets when he made, debuted in the big leagues two years ago. It's a little thing, but Wilson Ramos is set up in on the throwovers. And sometimes you set up the opposite of where you're going to go with the pitch. They're going to pop out there. You see that? He's trying to set up Stan. It's a little cat and mouse game that you, as a catcher, when you know you're throwing to first, you set up the opposite of where you're going to go for the pitch. Better get it in there. You see, it's sitting dead red right now. The 2 0 count. Big time cut on 96. <laughs> that was power against power. And if you don't like that right there, you don't like baseball. 96 miles an hour right down the middle. Tie game, and Steven Strasburg challenges the guy with the most power in baseball. Look at this right down the middle. And Stanton trying to hit it out of the stadium. It's good stuff. Breaking ball hanging and it is banged into the corner. We'll watch Brett Butler and down to speed. He sends him. Harper misses two cutoff men. There's a throw at third for Strasburg and Stanton is out. So Steven Strasburg setting up down the third baseline, able to grab that long throw and at least get an out at third. The reasoning behind the curveball after the fastball, Stanton fouled that fastball straight back. Ramos and Strasburg thought he was on it. He hung a curveball right there, and Stanton caught it out front. It was the right pitch. It just wasn't executed by Steven Strasburg, and Valdez Beans goes all the way from first base for the first run of this ball game. A hitter tells you by his swing what he is seeing up there. In the pitch before we showed you showed Stanton right on the heater. That's why they went to the curve. It just didn't get to the other side of the plate. One nothing Miami. Casey McGee the hitter. First time either ball club has not only had two hits in an inning but consecutive hits. Now you got to regroup, turn the page, and get some outs. Damage done. Keep it a one-nothing ball game. Have confidence that your club is going to figure out Alvarez or Marlins bullpen. McGee one hopper to Anthony Rendon. First out, sixth inning. Well, it's the biggest at bat of this game by far. Power against power. Stanton versus Strasburg. First pitch fastball loved it. It set up this pitch right here, but Stanton wasn't biting. 
then that's what causes this pitch right here. You see where Ramos was set up? He wanted that curveball that's been sweeping today from Strasburg down and away, left it right out over the plate. And Stanton didn't miss it. Scored Valdez being all the way from first, and I don't know what John Carlo was thinking going to third base on this. But the damage was done, and it was the right game plan, just wasn't executed. His National League leading 70th RBI. Marcelo Zuna 0 for 2 pair of ground balls. Strasburg's due to bat third in the seventh. And the breaking ball low and away. Marlins box two hits prior to this inning. Valdez being double. Harper lost in the lights back in the first. And the Alvarez single, two outs in the fifth. Steven Strasburg was ahead of Jordani. Valdez speed gave him an 0-2 pitch that he could single on and then stand the double. It was absolutely hammered into the left field corner. Great changeup. And he goes upstairs with 96. Inning over, but Stanton delivers the first run of the game. Bottom of the order ahead for Washington. Nothing Marlins. Espinosa McLeod Strasburg scheduled. Top of the seventh. We invite you to be a part of the Harris Teeter Food Drive. Benefits the Capital Area Food Bank in Nationals Park this weekend. August 2nd and 3rd. Donate three or more cans of food. You receive a pair of tickets for an upcoming Nats game while supplies last. The first 1,000 fans to donate Harris Teeter private label cans receive $5 in Nats bucks. Phone number 202675 Nats, the website nationals.com slash tickets. Danny Espinosa fly ball to center. Marcelo Zuna will catch it almost 400 feet away. That ball was touched.
Steven Strasburg on deck in a one nothing game. That could change if Nate McLeod would get aboard. Steven 96 pitches 57 strikes through six. Well, if you're Steven Strasburg, you should be able to hang one curveball and give up one run and be okay. You'd think. But Henderson Alvarez trying to match him pitch for pitch. I just got to believe, based on that first and second inning, that somewhere here he's going to run out of gas. Two pitches short of 100. 101 last time out at Atlanta. And a 3 1. And that check swing got right into DJ Rayburn. That ball, Nate Klaus going down to first base. We heard a couple of sounds. If he didn't foul tip it, did the ball hit him? And now Marlins will probably try to sort that out after they check on the home plate umpire. Well, bench coach Rob Leary in the third base dugout for the Marlins went for the phone. And you can review. A foul tip. But right now, everybody checking to see if DJ Rayburn is okay, but I think that got him right in the right forearm or wrist area. And Sean Cunningham, the Marlins trainer, out to check on him. Here's what it sounded like. I think it was glove and forearm. It had nothing to do with bat. Let's see this right here. I mean, you could make the case that he went if you want to check on the appeal, but it's too late for that. That's yeah. There's no foul ball there. DJ Rayburn, a tough dude. That got him good. Yeah, that right arm and hand trembling. Well, Exmo shot us some fishes and a ricochet piece off of Rayburn. Trying to fight that queasy feeling you get. Looks like Sean Cunningham, the head trainer for the Marlins. So I think I can. He just read his lips. I think Brian Honor asked him if he could go. There's a couple of ways he could do it. He could actually call strikes with his left hand if he wanted to, and he could have the catcher throw new baseballs in the game. So we'll see what they do. DJ Rayburn, second full year in the big leagues. Still testing the fist and the grip and the ability to do anything with that right arm that took one flush on the forearm. Well, this might break up the rhythm of. Henderson Alvarez, he has been in some kind of groove, you never know. They're calling Nate McLeod back. Look Wait at that a, thing swollen up already. Hold on a minute. Matt Williams out of the dugout, and, and they just signal for Nate McLeod to come back to home. Well, obviously, he did not foul tip the ball. It was a clear miss. The only thing the Marlins could be appealing is whether he went around or not. Nate knows he missed that ball. But they signaled Nate McLeod pointing at home plate to come back. He hasn't yet. What are they saying here? I'm, I'm confused. And so is Nate McLeod, and so is Matt Williams. He didn't go. It was clearly a ball. If they're saying it's a foul ball, then somebody needs to review it. 
A 3 1 count, so I guess they're saying he went. So it's going to be a 3 2 count, but based on that replay, he wasn't close to going. Matt Williams still speaking with Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief. He's going back to the dugout now. If they're saying it was a foul tip card, they need to review it. If they're yeah. saying he swung, they need to review it, even though they can't. So here's from the side. Not even close to going. And if they called that a foul ball, they missed it. And in a one run baseball game, this is a big call. And the only thing I can think of is that they said he went. And if they did, they missed it. Three balls, two strikes with one out. Emma Cloth to left. Yelich, two outs. Inside the numbers with Jeep. And how he's gone to the fastball so much more tonight. My name McLeod's got both hands in the air. He's asking Randy Nor on the top step what happened right there. And and I'm sorry, but that's a big play. You got a good runner on first base. You got Strasburg who can handle the bat in a one run baseball game. At the very least, you bunt McLeod to second base, and Denard Span has a chance to drive him in. And now the top of the seventh is over. As Strasburg rounds out. The Nationals have one hit since the fourth. Two since the second and three in the entire game. It's our Hyundai seventh inning stretch in Miami. John Carlos stand his 70th RBI it was so far the play of this game. Steven Strasburg facing Stan, but I'll start with Jordani Valdespin base hit up the middle. He's been seeing Strasburg big all night. Double to add to that one. And then the right pitch in the wrong location. And Stanton didn't miss it. Valdespin who could run scored all the way from first base, and Steven Strasburg cutoff man gets Stan at third. Strasburg seventh inning of work. Saltalamaki of Baker and Echevarria. Well, the eighth inning will be so important. First of all, Stephen has to keep it like it is. Top of the order coming up.
because if you don't do damage in the eighth, they're looking at Steve Ciszek, a very good closer and a tough guy to read. DJ Rayburn hanging in there after that shot to the arm. Like a really good breaking ball. Ball one. Salta Lamacchia hitting himself with that foul ball. I I'm still baffled by the whole Nate McLeod thing. He walked, he didn't swing. He didn't follow it off. That was ball four. He's still, still shaking, shaking his, his head. head. Yeah. I mean, th that's a huge play. And a towering fly ball. Short left center. Bryce Harper will make the call and grab it. There's a lot of things that Matt Williams could have done right there if McLeod was at first. Might have pinch hit for Strasburg. Might have bun in Strasburg. Could have sent Nate McLeod. We'll never know. Here's Jeff Baker, couple of ground balls to the right side. Strasburg delivers 95 perfectly to the outside edge. Right-hander Brian Morris. Alvarez had 102 pitches through seven. Who tried to get the Nats out of that jam in the ninth inning? On a pitch up, fly to right, the cloth back, edge of the track, two outs. First half champions are back in Woodbridge through July 30th. Fun and excitement all week. Come down and see the future Washington Nationals all summer long. Go to PotomacNationals.com or call the number on your screen. Number eight man, a Danny Echevarria. 0 for 1 with a fly ball to right and a walk. Strasburg gets the breaking ball to the outside corner. Reed Johnson. For Alvarez, if the inning continues, Fastball still live at 95, still down the zone. DJ River took a look at it from the opposite shoulder of Wilson Ramos and called it a strike. Great command by Steven here as he continues late in the game. And a 1 2. Wicked breaking ball. That's a foul tip. And Wilson Ramos got that one. Everybody's getting worked over back there tonight. Well, these pitchers, they throw so hard these days. They have so much stuff. Check swings, balls in the dirt. It's a tough era right now for catchers and umpires. And it gets no easier when the bullpens come in. I think they can tell you it's always been a tough era back there. They're always wearing it, especially catchers. 
I just don't know how they do it on a daily basis. Last time out, 100 pitches in five and a third at Colorado. Pitch number 108 here. Last ball gets a fly ball. Danny Espinosa backing out. He'll hold off span. And now it's seven innings for Steven Strasburg. This is the tenth time this year he's gone at least seven. Score him a couple, get him a win. He's pitched great. Here at Marlins Park, and we're going to take it to our T-Mobile game changer, the T-Mobile guy. I got my Samsung GS5 right here, and I have no idea what happened here. But Nate McLeod definitely didn't swing. He definitely didn't foul the ball off. So in a 3-1 count, he throws his bat, takes his shin guard off, and takes his base on obviously a ball four. He was called back to home plate. Yeah, the umpire obviously said he went around there. And that's a great shot. I think that says it all right there. Just, really? That's a guy that can steal a base, definitely score from first in a one run game with Strasburg coming up. I have no idea what happened. Top of the eighth. Brian Morris obtained June 1st from Pittsburgh. He was 4 0 with the Pirates. And now. For the Marlins in 24 games he's gone 3 and 0 here. 1.93 earn run average with Pittsburgh 0.33 here. He's just basically given up nothing. One earned run in 28 innings since the trade and he's become the setup guy for Steve Ciszek. Span 0 for 2 with a walk. Turned around, squared to try and bunt that fastball. Call the strike up in the zone. Interesting. The strike call? Yeah. Archman one for two career against the right hander Morris. That ball close to hitting Denard in the back foot. Well, he's a three pitch guy. He'll cut the fastball at 90. His straight fastball is 95, and that's the slider right there at 84.
Span, hot shot right there. Jeff Baker. Since the sixth inning last night, when the Nationals scored five runs, they have no runs on five hits. Well, it's a different lineup now. You don't have Jason Worth in there. You don't have Ryan Zimmerman in there, but still got some capable guys that all of a sudden need to start doing the little things to manufacture. You run the horses out there and you got your lineup. It's just see it and hit it. But right now, you got to move runners. You got to pick them up at third every time. And you got to play fundamentally sound baseball at the plate and on the bases. Anthony Rendon opposite field double last time. That was leading off the sixth. When the Roche flew out. He couldn't advance. Grounder to third. And then he was stranded there. And Jeep takes us inside the numbers with the National League run leaders. Rendon also the most in the major leagues. 75 would be good. Sometimes you have to drive yourself in. He's done it 13 times. Rendon facing Morris for the first time. Just never know how things are going to take a turn. It was the top of the seventh last night. The Nats are up six to nothing. Worth hits the ball beautifully to the right field corner. Stanton throws him out, trying to dance around a tag. Sprained his ankle. Rendon, foul, just foul. Such a quick bat, letting the ball get so deep right there and still able to pull it down the line, just misses foul. One and two, the fastball misses away. Morris thought he had it. Took a couple steps off the mound, was waiting for the throw to go around the infield. Tried to backdoor the two seamer, run it back. Just misses off the plate, and he starts to walk off the mound, has to get back up there. And these sun pitch track showing that he's kept everything down in this AB. Two two, target away. And Anthony Rendon works the count full. He's nervous. How many times do you see a major league hitter yawn in the middle of an at bat in a one run game? He's really feeling the pressure right now. Three two with one out. Rendon, what a great at bat. I mean, Nearly missed a double. Tying run support for LaRoche. I've seen a lot of things in baseball. I've seen guys blowing bubbles in the middle of a play. I've actually seen guys blowing bubbles in the middle of an at bat when they hit a home run. I've never seen a guy in the middle of an at bat in a one run game in the eighth inning yawn in between pitches. That, folks, is a first for me. They say he's got a slow heartbeat and that nothing gets to Anthony Rendon and he's never rattled. I would think that pretty much does it all. You ever seen that? Can't say that I have. Not by anybody between the lines anyway, or in the batter's box. Also I mean, you. usually adrenaline doesn't allow you to do that, right? I might tell you about the atmosphere here too, but well, we've said this before. You go on the road certain places, you have to create your own atmosphere. Yeah. I've heard college basketball coaches say that yeah. for many years. That's trying to do that here in the eighth inning. Adam LaRoche 0 for 1 career against Morris and he misses away one ball one strike. Ground ball to second two flies to center field. LaRoche 0 for 3. 
And in the series, one for seven with a sack fly. Out to left center, Ozuna tracking it. Two down. It's up to Wilson Ramos. Kind of off the end here, just hits it off the very end of the bat. You saw the reaction from Adam LaRoche, and you usually don't see that frustrated tonight. Yeah, might have given away his batting gloves on his way to the dugout after making that out. Wilson Ramos a walk 0 for 2. 1 for 2 career with a double against Morris. Swing mode 91 cutting away. One two five on that pitch from Morris. Pretty quick to the plate. Salta Lamacchia probably above a 2.0, but this is a time of the game when you can take a shot right here if you're Matt Williams with a stolen base. Not that fast that you can't steal. Similar pitch. Sped up a little bit there, much quicker. One nothing Marlins, top of the eighth. Nationals have been out hit 4 3. They've been given five walks tonight. And Morris staying out there, one ball, two strikes. Pitch coming. Don't want to go to 3 2 and give Rendon a head start at first base. A batter in the on deck circle who's hit a home run against this pitcher. Bryce Harper, one for two career against Morris with a long ball. Two hits tonight and a walk. Target in. Catcher just kind of shifting in there. And Wilson Ramos takes the heater up and in. Now it's full. Big miss. Here we go. Hit a gap. It's a run. And Ramos is the sixth walk the Nats have been given tonight. Stage set for Bryce Harper. So the Nats have three hits tonight. Bryce has two. You know what's coming, right man, the right spot. Game on. Left-hander Mike Dunn ready if needed. And going to get him. Mike Dunn and Bryce Harper have faced each other 11 times. Bryce has two hits against him. You guessed it. One of them has been a home run. So Morris gets two, walks two, and the Nats have the lead run on base.
brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Night Point Systems. They offer the technology you need when you need it. That's hoping to warm up this Miami evening a little more. They've been given an opportunity to get that door ajar here. Zach Walters will run for Wilson Ramos. He'll be 90 feet behind Anthony Rendon, who walked with one out. And here's Mike Dunn making his 50th appearance of the season. It's a lot of ball games. This guy's been a good situational power guy in this league for a while. 50 games puts him in the top four in the league in appearances. Well, lefties hit 217 against the fastball slider combination. Fastball in the mid 90s. Bryce Harper hitting 333 in 26 games, 45 at bats against lefties this year. So something's got to give. And here we go. Right man, the right spot for the Nationals. Bryce Harper, two hits, a walk tonight. As mentioned, two for 11, four strikeouts, but a home run career against Mike Dunn. Fly ball, left field line. Echeverria, eighth inning over for the Nats. On the one pitch, they have stranded eight tonight. Six walks, not one converted. Tomorrow. They'll have to win this one tonight to set that up. The man has been fantastic. Roark on the season, 10 and 6 with a 282 ERA. 20 starts, the league getting only 235 against him. He's won three in a row, giving up three runs in 21 innings. Left hander Brad Hand for the fish. Noon, Nats Extra will join you 12 30. Fans, you can follow every Nats game with MLB.com app out on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day and more. Download on the App Store. Visit Nationals.com for details. Jose Lobatone. Obviously coming into catch after Wilson Ramos was pinch run four. And we'll see where they have. He's got to be straight up. up. Has to be straight up. Because if he's hitting ninth, then you can't pinch hit for him. So you keep him right where Ramos was, fourth in the order. Nats have right handed batters remaining on the bench with Ciszek coming in. And that's low and away. Johnson always a tough out.
They have a sacrifice and two hits from their number nine spot tonight. And for Reed Johnson, his 13th pitch hit of the year in 43 at bats. Top of the order, Kristen Yelich. He is 0 for 8 against the Nationals in these two games. For two career against Jerry Blevins, who struck him out last night to give the Nats a chance to get out of that ninth inning, but then Jeff Baker put an end to that with the double. And a curveball after a long look at the runner. Surprised Yellis didn't step out and call time right there. See those marks on his bat. That's where the balls hit the bat. You start getting them down by the label, guys will change bats. They don't want to see ball marks where they're not supposed to be. Surprise it. Mike Redmond is not bunting right here, but in a 2 1 count, probably going to swing away. He's probably thinking that if Yelich bunts, I get a left on left matchup with Valdez being. Yeah, get him. Stanton doesn't get to swing the bat. DJ Rayburn, as you mentioned, he might went left handed call on the strike there. Still flexing that right arm. And a 2 2 from Blevins. Hey, look where he's setting up. He's so exposed. Yeah, I've been noticing that. A lot of umpires will stay with the catcher, right? Yeah, stay with the catcher, kind of get over one shoulder, but he's got half of his body. Open off Wilson Ramos right shoulder. Start the runner right here. A lot of managers would up by one. We'll see what the Marlins do. Yelich has struck out 86 times this year. Three two runner holds. I'll tip. Aaron Barrett. And I think in right field you might know who's warming up. Target outer edge. Just enough off speed in the back of his head right now not to get to the fastball. I think if you drop the hammer on him right here, you might have a chance for a strikeout. And there he is, Deep C. Sheck, who is 26 out of 29. For the Marlins. Soriano, 25 out of 29. That 
ball drilled out to left center. Denard Spann can't reach it. Hits the top of the wall and stays in. And the Marlins lead 2 0. Telling you as a hitter, when you're laid on a fastball and you see enough of it in a row, you finally just say, you know what? So what if he throws the off speed? I'll look stupid right here and he can strike me out. But I'm going to start my swing early. I'm going to catch the fastball out front. That's exactly what Christian Yelich did on another fastball from Jerry Blevins. Hard span, none chance at that ball. It was tailing away from him the whole way, and that scores Reed Johnson all the way from first base. Maybe one too many fastballs right there to Yelich. Nationals have six, seven, and eight due up in the ninth. And they'll have to score at least two. And now the Marlins have a runner at second base. Nobody out. And a guy who's swinging the bat well and is also a bunter with good speed. That ball behind him from Jerry Blevins. Looked like a breaking pitch. That just floated toward the right side on deck circle a bit. Oh, this is actually outside. And kids at home bunch strikes. Don't has to field it. Couldn't wait any longer. Over to Espinosa. Sacrifice good. And a third run is at third base. Well, here's your ATT fan photo of the day. Hashtag Masson fan photos. Good looking pair outside the ballpark right there. Best part about that picture is right there. I think every fan should have to jump up and touch that sign on the way in. Aaron Barrett and John Carlos Stanton here in the ninth. Marlins trying to stretch it out. Marlins trying to add a third to that. You can join us this weekend at the fairgrounds at Nats Park for Masson's social media weekend style by haircuttery. Check out at Masson Nationals on Twitter for more info. Share a haircut with a child in need. And find out how at haircuttery.com. Aaron Barrett gets the call against John Carlos Stanton. They have faced each other. And uh, we remembered that at bat. In DC. 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Well, I could use that right here for obvious reasons. I 
see if Yelich is thinking about going contact play. Matt Williams bringing his infield in. And I know if I was Anthony Rendon, I would not be feeling real comfy right now with John Carlos Stan in the box. Or Ian Desmond for that matter. Yeah, I'm not sure any of the four are real comfortable, especially the guys on the pull side. Stanton, one for two. A walk, the RBI double two innings ago. Barrett goes after him away, 86. Uh, after that swing, I don't know if you even show him anything but a slider. Even close. Probably gonna see another one. I know a lot of people at home are probably saying, "Well, why aren't you walking him right here?" It's because you brought the slider in to face him. Slider plays against Dan, and you saw why in the first two pitches. Too much of the plate with an 0-2 pitch, and John Carlos Stanton makes it three nothing. Both runs charged to Jerry Blevins. That's twice tonight against Stanton. The game plan has been right, but the execution of that plan hasn't. So you go first pitch slider. That's why you brought in Barrett to face Stanton. Strike one, strike two. Tried to bounce this. Guarantee you, folks, he didn't mean to leave it right there. And Stanton after seeing two of them. Broke his back, it sounded like, for a single to left, and the Marlins lead 3 0. I'll tell you, Yelich did it on the 3 2 pitch. He was late on a few of them, and he sold his soul to the fastball. He quit thinking about anything off speed. He said, If you throw off speed, you got me, hit a double. And Stanton did the same thing right there. He said, Okay, you threw me two, I look bad, you're going to throw me three, I'm looking for it, and he did. Swing and a miss, Casey McGee. McGee this year one for two against Barrett with a single. I mean, it's all you need to do is go back to the second A in this ball game. When you have an elite pitcher like Henderson Alvarez on the ropes, there was something obviously wrong. The trainers came out, the coaches came out. Those are the kind of guys you got to step on their throat, knock them out early. If you let them hang around, they figure it out. And Alvarez, an all star for the Marlins, did. Got out of that bases loaded, nobody out jamming the second. And now you're really up against it at the top of the ninth if you're the Nats. Miami Marlins trying to get away. From the Nats as much as they can in this one. They have a three run lead. They're trying to get back to the 500 mark tonight. Their big guys driven in two runs. He has 71 on the air. And this series has turned into a tough one since the late innings last night. AJ Ramos, in case they lead by more than three with the Nats bat tonight. Happens for a young pitcher. You throw two really good sliders to John Carlos Stanton. You tell yourself, I'm going to throw the best slider I've ever thrown in my life for strike three, and you overthrow it. It stays out over the plate and allows Stanton to get the barrel on the baseball. It was the right pitch. He just, I'm sure, if you ask him, wanted to bounce another one down away. And a fastball up and away. That'll take care of Casey McGee for the second out here in the eighth. Climbing the ladder, probably thinking about a slider. Top of the zone with the fastball for strike three and 94. 
And it may be easy to say, but why didn't you throw Stanton one fastball to back him off the plate? If you don't execute that, it's out of the park. You could have. You know, to set up another slider. But when a guy looks so bad on the first two, the tendency is to go right back to it today. I don't even need to set him up. I just got to throw a good one. That's on the corner to Marcelo Zuna. 0 for 3 tonight. And in the series, 2 for 7, 2 RBIs. Now that is nasty. 94 pouring down and in to the right handed batter. Well, he's thrown 11 pitches and 10 of them have been strikes. Target in. Fastball up and in to strike him out. Two huge runs though for the Marlins. They lead by three. D. Ian Desmond will be the leadoff guy in our T Mobile duo. Desmond red hot a week ago. He's cooled off. He's got to get it going against Steve Ciszek. Espinosa and McLeod in the ninth after him. DC Lexus dealers are donating $250 to the Children's National Medical Center for every home run a Nats player hits this season. So keep them coming. Three or four here in the top of the ninth. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Check out that number. Yeah, Desmond and Ramos. Pardon me, Desmond and LaRoche homered last week in Colorado. And the Nats didn't hit any in Cincinnati. This big ballpark hasn't yielded any power. Now the Nats have to deal with Steve Ciszek. 26 saves and 29 opportunities. 34 last year when he really established himself as a bona fide big league closer. Yeah, three quarter to sidearm fastball, 93, 94 at times. Had a frisbee slider from the same arm angle. So really a two pitch guy, an occasional changeup. And you see what lefties are hitting against him, which is really odd. Usually sidearm guys have their way with righties and struggle more with lefties. By the way, because the Marlins have been winning a lot, this will be his seventh appearance in 10 days. They're trying to win their ninth game of their last 10, trying to make it six in a row. So during a streak like that, the closer is going to be working. Ian Desmond is four for 10 against Ciszek. That's a strike, and it's 0 2. Included in those four hits, a double and a triple. Desmond a great stroke on an 0 2 pitch. Gets the ball into right field. The Nationals first hit since the Rendon double in the sixth. 
Nice piece of hitting right there by Ian Desmond staying that slider from. Down under from C check it just flicks it into right field so lead off man aboard here in the top of the ninth. Danny Espinosa is going to have to turn around what's been a tough matchup for him. For three tonight 0 for 8 career against Cishek. Seven strikeouts. If you get another guy on maybe you think about Jason Worth just stand up there and letting it rip and trotting around. Well there he is trotting around with his bad ankle. Tough ballpark to play tater catch up ball in though. Yeah. Espinosa the out of the night for Alvarez when he struck out Danny. Bases loaded, nobody out in the second. And now that one gets umpire DJ Rayburn right above the right foot. Unbelievably tough night for him. You have to take an ice ice bath when he gets back to his room. Fill up the tub full of ice, DJ. You were having a tough night, bro. Boom, right Ooh. off the knee on the inside. Yeah, hit the ground first and then the knee. The oh. shin guard right there just kind of covers the knee and in the front, but not on the side. The reason I know that, I've worn that whole outfit before, head to toe, steel toe shoes and everything. He exposes himself though. Look where he's standing. He may, if he you may. set up a way, he stays right there. He's, Danny Espinosa gets hit. Nicely done. Wear it. Get that tie and run to the plate. Nate McClough and then Worth to the on deck circle. How big is that run now in the bottom of the eighth for the Marlins? Both of them. That third one knows what it meant. Yeah. Nate McClough against Steve Ciszek, first career matchup. Slider in first pitch. Ninety four tailing, blown away. Jay Rayburn stood up straight, called it ball two. That was outside. Slider that didn't come back. For 92, which would have been ball three. And that's the first out in the night. Next up, Jason Worth. Well, he's thinking this is a backdoor slider again. It goes the other way. And by the time he commits, it's too late. And now the line moves to Jason Worth, who's thinking about one thing. And you would think it's going to have to be the other way. I don't think Steve Ciszek would give Jason Worth anything he'd pull out of this park to tie the game, but we'll see. Jason Worth is two for five career against him.
this is one of those just go up there and let it fly. Because you know, you know, you're barking, the ankles hurt, and you can't run. Gaging. That's Jeff Franzen and Hairston left on the bench. In case they need a pinch runner here after Jason would get on. Second base, Desmond let off the inning on a no two pitch with a single. Espinosa hit by a pitch. And it's a fastball in there, two and one. Tough to call. Watch how long it takes DJ Rainford to make this call. First of all, it's outside, and then he calls it a strike. And worth on a 2 2 pitch fly ball to right for Stanton. Check out the sequence Steve Ciszek versus Jason Worth. First pitch slider ball. Second pitch fastball ball. So driver's seat takes a fastball down the middle. And then this is the call of the at bat 3 1 versus 2 2. It's 2 2. And then Jason Worth got a slider. Just looked like he couldn't stand his backside to get there. Slider right down the middle. Flies out to Stanton. And now it's up to Denard Span who's hit one to the track tonight and hit a bullet to first for his last time. Span one for four career against Ciszek. Take her swing right here in this situation. Uh, Denard's going to have to get something he absolutely loves right here. Because you'd love to see Anthony Rendon hit with the bases loaded. Span base hit right field. Stanton charging. Desmond stops at third. Bases loaded. Well, he's hit the ball hard tonight three times and he finally has a hit to show for it. Flew out to the track in the sixth, bullet to first in the eighth, and now a bullet to right for a base hit. And Anthony Rendon steps to the plate as the go ahead run now for the Nationals. Rendon one for three against Ciszek. So far, not a good series for closers. See if the Nats can return some of the misery to the other side. Rendon tonight, one for three, double a walk his last two times. Fastball to the outside edge. Crowd of 22,672 on their feet for an 0 2 pitch. 
Rendon, did he go? He did. Game over. Three hours and seven minutes. The Nats shut out. They will leave the bases loaded for the second time tonight and strand 11 runners. Hey, Marlins are playing good baseball right now. They're taking advantage of mistakes. They're taking advantage of opportunity. And right now, they're taking advantage of the Nats. Washington five hits by the Miami pitching staff tonight. And the Marlins are back to 500.